it's very interesting for me to just watch the process. Like w- when I first had stayed uh, with some of these anglers, I got a little overwhelmed because they're like getting up at like three in the morning. They're going to six different boat ramps in the day. They're coming in at 10 o'clock at night, you know, crashing and doing the same thing like three or four days in a row. And then you have two days of tournaments. And that that amount of effort, like, you don't realize how much effort people put into ending up being one of the people that wins that. Like, it is not, I just looked at some maps and went out and caught fish. I mean... There is so much blood, sweat, and tears, and preparation, and hard work that goes into that. Welcome to the Woman Angler and Adventurer Podcast. Inspiring real women with a passion for fishing and the outdoors to go get their adventure on. Now, here's your fearless host, Angie Scott. Welcome to this week's episode of the Woman Angler and Adventurer Podcast. So I'm super excited. It's been a while since I've been able to do an in-person interview, and we're actually sitting on the pontoon boat, socially distancing, but uh, I'm super excited. It just happened to work out that Kate Field was driving through Nashville, <laughs> and I've been, I reached out as like, I've been wanting to have you on the show. Are you available tomorrow? Well, actually, I'm going to be in Nashville. <laughs> I know. It was perfect. <laughs> I'm like, well, swing by. It was meant to be. It's so awesome. It's I love when things are meant to be that they, when they just it work is. out. And this is a wonderful place. It's like this whole little special houseboat water world community <laughs> here with like outdoor living rooms and like personal bars and things uh-huh. like that. I love this place. Don't give away all our secrets. Uh, I could I could have a pad here. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's an awesome. If the slip comes open, you just give me a call. It's a, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it's funny you say that because uh, there might be a slip coming open soon. This all one of the right. ladies got her houseboat for sale and rumor is Oh, that, for sale and a slip. Yeah, you could well, buy it. Well, that's just perfect. Then, yeah. But <laughs> the rumor is somebody's got their eye on it and if they buy it, they're going to take it over over to Center Hill Lake, and so that will free up the slip. But oh well, but you might get in a bidding war. I like this idea for the boat. Though. Yeah, <laughs> I want to have like little things everywhere, like across the U.S. There you go. Yeah, that like would little be sweet. crash areas. Yeah, some, you know. So you should Percy just, Priest houseboat. I could should, do it. You could start like an Airbnb <clears throat> empire. And My own Airbnb. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> just for me. Kate's, yeah, Kate's, I don't want that responsibility. It's B and B. Yeah. <laughs> well, welcome to Nashville. This Thank is your you. first time in Nashville. Yes. First time on Percy Priest. Yes. Which is a on and your... I'm sort of sad I didn't bring my pole out of my car. Cause... Well, I got one over here. You could... I, okay, because I need to do my day of fishing. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> well, that was going to be one of my questions. We'll get into that. Okay. But I was going to ask, like, what constitutes a day? I mean, is there a time limit that you have to no. fish? Or it's just no. Throw I it just in the gotta water. go do it. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll get that. Okay. We'll make that happen for you. All right. You, you never so. know. I might get a monster. You could. Uh, yeah. Probably not. But <laughs> Percy Priest Think is positive. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> we were just talking about G Man in the PMA, the positive mental attitude, yes. and how important that is, and how I didn't know what that was, <laughs> or who G Man was. Sorry, G Man. But now you know. Now I yes. Yeah. I'm. I've learned. Learn the error of my ways. <laughs> he but. is so funny too. Love him. Um, so yeah, we'll throw the. I've got a um, Flappy Daddy on there. I don't know if you're familiar with the. I have no idea what that is. Gambler Flappy Daddy, and it's been producing for me. So okay. you never know. It's Texas, we'll see. Texas you just rig. said I wasn't gonna catch. I anything. know, but Percy Priest is tough. So uh, it's pretty much every water it's very I fish pressured. is tough, Angie. <laughs> Well then, you're in yeah. your element. Here I will. It'll be perfect. perfect. So, so you drove from Ohio. Is that where you left today? From? Today, yeah. okay. Yeah. I mean, you've been dry. You've been on like this epic. I don't know this Quixotic uh, adventure, <laughs> chasing windmills across America <laughs> called kayak tournaments. 
Yeah. Uh, no, I've got family in Columbus. My sister and, and her family are there. And honestly, I had never been to her house. Really? This is how much of a hermit I've been. She's been there 14 years. And oh, wow. that was the first time I've been to my sister's house. So, uh, so I'm sorry if that sounds like the most dysfunctional relationship <laughs> in the world. Sorry, Julie. Happens. But it just, yeah, my own well, physical. Time flies. Time and flies. And I busy and... have issues and it was just too, too much. But right. This was a good chance to get out and see her and not spend my birthday alone and depressed, be with family. It sounds like you've definitely, you know, with this whole pandemic that's going on and, you know, it's negatively affected a lot of people, but you kind of just got to make the best of it. And it sounds like you've really pivoted and, you know, you're now able to get out and experience all these adventures. It really... um, for me, I mean, I, I, the difference was works because I'm still working full time. Right. And, uh, our, our office, no one can really, it's a little bit optional for some people to go back, but, uh, for the most part, just the way it is with COVID, it's, it's work from home. There's no specific ETA on return to office. And, um, when I went and in, when COVID first happened, I actually moved to southern Utah, stay with my parents, because it was getting sort of weird, you know, like, no toilet paper, you know, the groceries were wiped out, I heard rumors of gas shortages, I'm like, my parents are uh, 78, almost, one's almost 78, you know, so they're older, and I just got really worried about, you know, if something happens, how am I even going to get down there, and I didn't like the idea of just being cooped up by myself and being, if something happens, so I moved down there. Um, and that sort of started this whole idea for me of like, why do I have to be, I mean, yeah, I, I have my own home, but why do I have to be there? Right. Yeah. You like, don't. why do, if, if I'm logging in and I'm working, does it matter where I'm logging in from? So I worked, I worked down there, uh, for a number of months. And then when I went to Kentucky Lake and that, that tournament opened up, I drove out to Kentucky Lake, did that, and then I drove 37 hours in a 48-hour period to get back home in time to go to work. And I got, <laughs> so I like drove <laughs> Saturday and Sunday to get back, or no, was it? No, it was Monday and Tuesday because we got done with the thing. So it was a Monday and Tuesday, and I worked Wednesday. By Friday, um, by Friday of the, I think I was there for like a week, I was like, I can't do this. I feel like I'm in solitary confinement in a mm-hmm. house prison and no, no disrespect to my neighbors in Utah, but I'm, I'm not Mormon. Most of my, where I live are, mm-hmm. and that's fine. But it's very, um, when you, when you aren't, it's, it's a different experience in Utah. Um, you're just not part of all the things that happen within, uh, the church and, and the different ward stuff. So I'm was always having my neighbors are really nice, but they, but you really don't have a lot of people to talk to. Mm-hmm. And, um, I just felt like I was in house prison and solitary confinement. And I'm like, why did I drive all the way here <laughs> just to work? Why didn't I just stay somewhere else? And so that's, that's where I decided to take the leap. And, um, I came up with a wild plan that I and I still am sort of planning. I haven't really figured everything out, but I know that I wanted to travel. I didn't want to. My camper's too old. It doesn't have any air conditioning. It's from 1968. Mm. My truck's 20 something years old. Gets seven miles a gallon. I'm like this isn't going to work. Going to some of these places that are really hot and humid. And, right. Uh, I just sort of left with a, a an idea of places I was going to go and some tournaments and just let it evolve and see what happens. And that was a big risk, like pack up some clothes and just throw it in my car and go and not sure when I'm going to be back or where I'm going to end up going. It's a little crazy, but I'm, I'm really enjoying it. And my trip, it keeps evolving and expanding. (laughs) Which that's perfect. And everybody says, well, that's a really long way. And to me, <laughs> like, um, it's relative because I'm coming already from a really long way. So to me, 
okay, yeah, driving 10 right. hours or driving whatever, that seems far, but that's not in the scheme of things, not as far. And and in the this over the winter <clears throat> in Utah, I wanted to still kayak fish, doing like my 250 days. Mm-hmm. Like every weekend I would work and then every weekend I'd drive s- south five to six hours oh, and wow. then go fish and then drive back. So like... I'm willing to put in the miles and the work right. to do it and to try and experience it as best I can. But, you know, maybe talk to me later when I'm sick of driving. <laughs> but for now, I'm having a blast because it's all stuff I've never seen, you it know. Is. So it's like this constant new adventure. I don't, I guess if you'd seen it a bunch of times, maybe it's boring. But for yeah. me, I'm just like, I didn't. They're like, it's just corn. I'm like, no, but it's corn that I haven't seen yet, you know. And think of the alternative sitting at home yeah. by yourself. Yeah, that's in solitary really... confinement. I would much rather choose a day of driving over that. Yeah, you know exactly. Any day. So that's awesome. Well, one thing I wanted to talk about. So, so like I mentioned, you left from Ohio today, and you had kind of a crazy experience on your way here. I had, <laughs> and yeah, so about an hour and a and a half or so out, the rough the road was really rough. Just. I don't know, just they were doing construction or whatever. And I looked back and I just saw in my rear view mirror that maybe some of my ties had loosened up a little bit, not mm-hmm. a lot. So I pu- pulled into the first rest stop that I found. And I, you know, I'm a, a SUV pulling a little cargo trailer with this giant kayak on top <laughs> and parked in with the semis to adjust the straps. And so I'm on the kayak just adjusting the straps and retying everything, just making sure everything's secure for the load and balanced and all that. And this guy comes out from around the truck and like a muscly dude with a, with short, uh, wife beater, sort of a Vin Diesel kind of muscly oh, wow. kind of look yeah. bald, like seriously. And with sunglasses. And he comes up to the front of my car and I just had that gut feeling like this is bad. Like the, this is bad. Nobody <laughs> really knows where I am. And so I went to, to my car and put open my door and I had my door between him and which is good that that's the position you were in. Yeah. Very, uh, trying to sort of protect myself. And he pulls out this flashlight and he's like, you know, like something, something, my flashlight. And then he goes, do you want to see my taser? And he has in the flashlight is an actual, taser and he sets it off and it's like this arc of like taser light yeah. lightning or whatever on the end of that flashlight and he's like six feet from me and just sort of like holding this thing and it's like making this racket and i'm just like what in the you know my brain everything just slowed down like slow motion yeah like, like my brain's like this is really bad there's a <laughs> dude here who's gonna overpower you with a taser <laughs> <laughs> and I said something to the effect, and I like it's it's hard for me to remember exactly what I said, but I said something to the effect of, "Would you like to check out my pistol?" <laughs> and then I hopped in my car and closed the door, and his eyes got like super big, and then he like took off, and I'm like, "I'm out of here. I'm driving. I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm yeah, not stopping no. <laughs> because I think I just dodged like some weird, creepy, kidnappy, serial rapist, <laughs> Vin Diesel wannabe." So, yeah, I mean, that sounds humorous the way I described well, it, I, but it really no. was, uh, it shook me up and uh, probably yeah. for a good couple hundred miles, I was just like, and this is why this is in, to be honest, like you just never know as a woman, when you go around places and boat ramps, when I was on Kentucky Lake, um, there were people that would cruise by when I was just by myself and and I had that feeling in my gut, like, these guys are not here for just, you know, they're, like, looking for somebody right. to victimize. Yeah, boat know? ramps can be. And I creepy. have a GoPro ha- ha- hat. Right. And so what I've learned to do when this something weird happens, if I have my GoPro, I'll just say, GoPro, start recording. And it goes, beep. And I did that in Kentucky Lake. And those guys took off in their little car. You know, it's like three dudes in a sedan in the middle, and there's no one else at the boat ramp, and they're just like giving me this weird look, and then it's like, mm. yeah. 
And they'll once you start recording, they're like, oh, wait. You know, it makes them pause for a second. That's that extra security thing. Well, you know, at least if they find my GoPro somewhere, they'll know what happened to me. (laughs) I tried, but you'd be like, "What? uh, What uh, GoPro do you use? Which version?" uh, I have a seven that I wear on my head, and a five that I sometimes put on my kayak, depending how energetic I feel. But I don't know. So I have the eight and I, I'm not a big fan of the eight. It's kind of complicated. The reason why I got it was because you can go Facebook live with it, but that's not the easiest. Either. No, it's not. I you thought about be on getting Wi-Fi it for that. And I would, I would stick with what you got. Yeah. Um, I might get another seven at mm-hmm. some point And, and then I don't know. I would I'd love... like to get different angled shots, but, uh, I'm pretty self surprisingly. Despite how exuberant I see, I seem I'm actually quite self conscious. So I don't know. Well, I, I can edit it out, but there's other times I'm just like, oh my god, this it, is like the worst angle in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I look so fat. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but well, as a sad note, if anyone out there listening is interested in swapping a seven for an eight with me, I'd be happy to do that. <laughs> I was like, why did I get this thing? It's so uh, complicated. But so I don't use it hardly ever now. Uh, I use my iPhone yeah, all the time. But that yeah. would be hard to do doing what you're doing. And it's nice to be able to give those voice commands and, and have it start recording and all that. Yeah. So that's cool. I talk to my camera, Angie. It's sort of like um it's become like sort of like that castaway movie where yeah. the guy's like Wilson. talking to Wilson, yep. like my GoPro. Like you gotta I edit it GoPro. I edit it out because I'll be like, Oh my gosh, GoPro, I just got a fish <laughs> and I'm just like, Why am I talking? <laughs> That's so funny. Why am I talking like that? You, you gotta know? you gotta give it a name, like um like a boat name. <laughs> <laughs> or something. I, something. I don't know. Something. Um so so you've been on the road, so we talked mm-hmm. about the crazy experience you had today. Is that the craziest thing that's happened to you so far? Or have you had any other On the in this trip? Uh yeah. Pretty much. Have you had any like maintenance or like breakdowns or anything like that? Don't jinx. No, me. I don't want to jinx you. <laughs> Where's the wood? No, I try to do really good with car maintenance, you know. Yeah. But I mean eventually good. I'm sure I'll have an issue at some point. But hopefully not. Um you know, I've had weird stuff, you know. I I've had a lot of weird stuff that I've been involved in. I actually I mean, I think if anything, like I was I can deal with that dude. Like I knew the right thing to do. And that's because when, when I was a lot younger, um, just out of college, I worked with at risk youth and gang members basically. Mm. And I was in the middle of a lot of attempted murders face to face. Wow. You know, people going to shoot each other in the face and pistol whipping and just some really brutal violence. And, I'm, I'm a pretty hyper vigilant about that stuff. Mm -hmm. So uh, as far as that kind of like, I have a really good red flag when things are going to get really dicey and I'm pretty good at dealing with that stuff. So, I mean, that helped me, but I think that you have to be, pay attention to your surroundings when, especially if you're a woman on the road and at boat ramps and things like that, you got to pay attention. Mm -hmm. Can't be on your phone checking messages and like chatting because that's that's when you get take advantage of so yeah good good advice. down dark side yeah exactly the fun part of traveling but on the plus side you're enjoying it so far so yes. do you foresee yourself maybe going like the travel trailer or rv route in the future i don't know yet okay so i don't know yet like out. i said i've got like an older camper and, tr- and a truck i might get might go a new I like those Lance campers a lot Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know like a truck the the reason I like a truck and a camper as I think it's for at least in the southwest and stuff there's so many places that you can go with just the four wheels Mm -hmm. and maybe maybe you pull the trailer a kayak trailer right but you know it's a little easier to get around my neck of the woods versus something where you haul some big fifth wheel or right or a toy hauler is a little harder so true i don't know yeah i don't know so i've given myself some time and 
just see what happens. Well, you mentioned uh, when we were talking earlier before we got on the, the mics here that one of the issues you've had is just not having enough gear, you know, or, or baits and stuff like Mm -hmm. that. And then now it's hard to find them Mm -hmm. because there's like shortages everywhere. And if you order them online, you don't really have an address to have them (laughs) shipped to. Uh, so, and this, this wouldn't really help with that, but like down the road, because I'm actually looking to, uh, go the travel trailer route in the winter, and do some right traveling. Yeah. yeah, like November, December, January, yeah. like when it's cold here, because I hate the cold. Yeah. And uh, I'd love to be able to travel around and interview people on location yeah. and stuff like that. So I had to figure out a male, uh, you know, a solution. And so there's there's something called virtual mailboxes where you can set your address up to that uh, address. It's actual street address. And they will scan your mail in for you, like scan the envelope so you can see what it is. So you can tell if it's junk or not. Yeah. And so if you don't want, you can tell it's junk mail and you just tell them to recycle it. And then if it's something you need to see, then you can have them scan the contents and email it to you. So it's like a, like Whoa. I say, a virtual P.O. box. And they have these all over the country. That's interesting. So, yeah. So I've that never might heard be of that. An alternative to look into. That would be nice. If you decide. It doesn't solve the, I only bought one pack exactly. of zinkers, but. Because <laughs> you can have packages shipped there. Yeah. But then again, then you need them to forward it somewhere. Yeah. So that could be. So I did, um, the one, the other thing though, um, I went to Omnia Fishing when I was in Minnesota. They're in Golden Valley, Minnesota. Mm-hmm. And I really like them. They really do a nice job with their customers and, they have a different approach. It's really sort of like a shop by lake. So you can do oh, like nice. fishing reports about the lakes. And if you're going to a new body of water, they might have a report for that and give you an idea of what kind of baits to use for that lake. Because each lake's sort of different, you yeah. know, different times totally. of year. Um, and they had told me, you know, if I'm on the road and I know where I'm going to be, which I'd actually have to plan ahead, uh, right? you know, <laughs> and have an address that they could ship it. Like if it was a hotel or something right. like they could ship ahead and to wherever that is. But cool. that I'm going to have to get my act together. Do they, kind of do they pre-planning. have knowledge? Is it just for like Minnesota lakes or it's anywhere? Anywhere. Wow. That's yeah. awesome. That's yeah. really cool. I, like I that. filed like, I filed like, I don't know. 17 or something fishing reports i'm like every lake i'm gonna go to i've been filing yeah reports on cool. so i gotta look that up i'll put a link to that in the show notes oh yeah they have a it's website. a lot of fun I'll put that in there it's so a lot of awesome fun. from billion dollar ad budgets and arena naming rights to tens of thousands of retail locations big wireless providers spend big to appear like they're your only option how do they afford it all That big bill you get at the end of every month. Mint Mobile had a different idea. Instead of brick and mortar overhead, Mint Mobile is online only. What does that mean for you? A whole lot of savings because wireless plans from Mint Mobile start at just $15 a month. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for just $15 a month. You'll save enough that you can get a brand new rod and reel for the upcoming season. For anyone who just hates their phone bill, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just $15 a month. All plans come with unlimited talk, text, and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. You can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan, and you can even keep your same phone number along with all of your existing contacts. By going online only and eliminating traditional costs of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash waypoint. That's mintmobile.com slash waypoint. Cut your wireless bill to $15 a month at mintmobile.com slash waypoint. All right, so so you just had a birthday, <laughs> you and you the did big the five-o. big five zero. Oh. And last year, you you gave yourself a challenge, and we kind of mentioned it earlier about the two hundred and fifty days of fishing, yeah. and in in a year, yeah. And you're doing it again this year, yes. Okay, so 
I I kind of follow you on YouTube, so I've kind of seen the journey. But for listeners, sorry that, if I made you cry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you had a pretty epic finish to that. It was. I mean, how? I mean, honestly, it was like could storybook. It been, exactly. It was like sort of really hardcore, tragic sort of sco- <laughs> storybook, but it was storybook. I mean, from day one to the two hundred and fiftieth yeah. day, what what a journey that was. It was really hard honestly someone wrote like you're gonna race through this one i'm like no you don't understand like it's not easy if you if you are trying to fish four to five times a week there's things that happen that put that off sometimes you know whether you're traveling or yeah you know there's all kinds it's hard or you're just tired right you want to take a break or you live in a place like i do where it ices over for five months or something Mm -hmm. You know, so you have to, like, I would, in the fall and spring, like, there were days where I would fish, like, 14 days in a row. Wow. Because there were time in the winter I couldn't necessarily get out. So you have to make, make you know, you sort of have to, like, make a bank of time. But for me, it was really um, just an incredible journey. Like, I can't even believe I am where I am right right now. Like, if if you had told me. A year ago, when I came up with this crazy idea, I was like sitting at work going, I'm going to just do 250 days and like do rough thing. Oh, that's only like four, four to five days a week. I can do that. And like my, br- you know, like, like now I'll just go traps right. across the U.S. Like that's <laughs> about as far as I go. And, and then I decide to do it and then I'm like on my path. But, um, it, I would have never thought that back then that I would be traveling across America or going to these huge tournaments Tournaments, and any of that never ever would have considered like I was just thinking like I just was going to go fish about an hour away and for trout in my kayak Mm -hmm. (laughs) and and then you know try and get better at bass and learn different things but it really changed for me when I went um you know I'd already started doing it but by the time I went to this um the women's uh, fishing federation uh, get together. It was in. Is that Branson? It was outside of Branson. Yeah. I love Branson, by the way. Yeah, I I'm do. Just too. telling you, I love, I it. love Branson. And it's only like seven hours it for is. me from here. So I love Branson. There. And there's a lady who loves Branson even more than me because she showed me her tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. She had on the on her back. She had like I heart Branson wow. on it. I was like, this is a little too much, but this is awesome. Um, I but caught my first trout in Branson. They have wonderful. Yeah. That we fished on Tanny Como, mm-hmm. um, and it was, was in the middle Rock, of a rock. I think. Yeah, it might have been Tanny Como. We remember. were gonna do Table Rock this year, but just COVID has ruined everything. Yeah. But I really that was that that event. <clears throat> changed my entire life and it lit me on fire and i have not gone out that flame has not gone out i think that flame has gone like way out of control (laughs) for me but uh yeah it totally changed my life angie like i you have to understand like i had not gone anywhere on a a, outside of work like i've gone things for work and that's hard but i hadn't gone anywhere probably for a good 15 years by myself on a trip for myself for anything anything and i was so worried when i went there because you know i have some physical issues i didn't wasn't sure how people would receive me um i didn't know much about bass fishing i you know there's people there that were that i really looked up to Mm -hmm. and were so good and I just was, and I hadn't been around a bunch of women in like forever. So, you know, and I'm just like, is this going to be like everybody, like, you know, it's, uh, you know, a cat fight and everybody draws daggers out (laughs) and is really, you know, cause sometimes women can, we can be like that a little bit. Right. And, uh, I just was really worried about that. And it was so not that I learned so much there and everyone was so nice to me and people are like, we really like you. And I'm like, you like me? <laughs> like, <laughs> you, you don't know me, right? Why? This is like crazy, but it really opened my eyes that for me, like maybe I have something to offer. And, and I hadn't really talked about a lot of my stuff in life at all. And 
uh, when I was there, I met some other gals who had some similar things. And then I realized, like, I, by me not sharing my life with other people, like, I'm doing a disservice to them and to myself. And I do a disservice to the stuff that I went through, you know. And and so that's what I've tried to do is just be very open and try and communicate and, and be a better person for that. So, but it really changed it. And, and I've been on a tear trying to learn as much as I can. I mean, Mm -hmm. when I went there, I had like one rod (laughs) and now I've got like six rods, you know, and I'm, I'm learning new techniques and getting better. And I just am excited to see where I go in a year. Yeah. If I can keep this up and, you know, to look back where you started to where it's you're insane. At now, it's, you when you look day to day, you're like, whatever, I'm right. not going. But when you look really back, you're like, wow, I've gone so far. Yeah, I've you gone have. so far, and you don't realize it day to day. And I love what you're doing. I love how transparent you are, and you're just showing the good and the bad and the mistakes and the learning and all of that stuff. It's it, that we've needed someone like you for women uh in fishing for so long and so i just love love your youtube channel and everything you're doing well i appreciate that because it's a big risk for me to put that out there the internet is not a nice place it's a toxic sewage yeah um i do have pretty good skills at dealing with it but it's still different you know i deal with it for work but it's different when it's you and you're putting yourself out there Mm -hmm. and you know i try but it's I want to, I want to share that because I think this is what I've experienced this year is when I want to go do tournaments and I'll say, Hey, I'm going to go do this tournament. And there's some gals I know I'll say, would you like to come and, you know, come to the tournament or just come hang out? Not any pressure, not like you have to come to the tournament, but let's like, I'm going to be there. I've mm-hmm. never been there. I'm going to be there. You're in the area. And I found that by being willing to do that and m- make that an option, like I feel like it makes it more available for other women to feel more comfortable to try it. Right. And not go by yourself. Cause it's a lot to go by yourself and just go to some place and you don't know anyone and you don't know where to stay and you don't know the, like everything you don't know. Right. But if you can sort of try that for your first time with other, someone that you trust or someone, a friend, so you're not by yourself, it makes such a big difference because it's, it is scary and overwhelming. You know, yeah. I've had my cry in the parking lot moments. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, first of all, before I ask my next question, I was just going to say I almost went to that event. Um, I was, I was going to go, I know. And the only reason I didn't, I had a conflict. I can't remember. And and the scheduling just didn't work out. Well, whenever they do it, you're going to have to go. Yeah. So I was planning on going to the next one, but yeah, now with COVID and whatnot, we don't know, but, I know. um, so, and then I was going to say, so what was your first tournament experience? Like your very first one? (laughs) So I dove in really early. Um, I had gotten my kayak, um, and met a bunch of folks in kayak fishing, Utah, which is our local group. Mm -hmm. And, um, I sort of started out in the winter and they said, oh yeah, we do these bass tournaments. And I'm like, okay. And they, there's these online tournaments. You can do those. And so I dove in head first just to try them, which yeah. is sort of what I do. I just go, <laughs> oh, hey, this sounds like a good idea. Cannonball. <laughs> and I'll figure it out as I go along. But um, so that's how I started. Um, and I just, I love the, con- I'm, I'm used to be athletic and athlete. And I love that sort of competition. And I had missed that for so long. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was, I was scared my first, my first live tournament. Um, I was just scared that people were going to judge me like I wasn't going to catch a fish and people were going to judge me and say how I sucked and all, you know, all these things. And it was never the case. And actually I caught some fish, you know, I wasn't very good, but I caught some, but I never got, people were so nice 
to me. And I, that's when I realized like, it's not that, at least for me, I haven't experienced that kind of really super judgmental stuff. Or if they do think I suck, then they're at least polite enough not to t- <laughs> tell me, tell me, you know, they just sort of pat me on the head and let me go off on my <laughs> little merry way or whatever. But, you know, I know that I'm not, uh, I'm not like a super amazing tournament angler. I'm, I'm just not. Maybe someday I'll get there. You'll get there. I'll get there. Yeah. But and and I think positive about it. Yeah. But and I think if I work hard, it it'll happen. I really do believe that. But, uh, but I don't feel bad about performances. Like you know, some people are like trying to get up and win everything. And I know, like, if that happens, like, something happened in the universe, like, it all aligned, <laughs> and it's, like, the luckiest day of my life. Like, I hit Bet Max and won. Right. Bingo. Yeah. You know, I don't know that it would be a repeatable thing, but uh, I just have some different goals. Like, I want to get, like, the top half, mm-hmm. or the top, if I could get, like, the top 30% or the top 40%. Like, I, I'll work my way there. I want to earn that, and makes my way so do you feel like you're competing against yourself more than you're always competing against yourself Mm -hmm. all always (laughs) always like you know i'm my own worst enemy in so many different ways but uh mainly and honestly especially like these big tournaments where it's a huge lake i like kentucky lake there were days where i never saw another kayak angler Mm -hmm. you know so you don't see anyone else it's sort of this ethereal competition in a way like you yes you're competing but everybody's so nice it it makes it like i am genuinely happy like when i go stay with some friends for a kayak tournament like i love to root them on because i love seeing them do well it makes me so happy to see them do well like i just want like if i do great great but i really want them to like slay the fish and just like pwn the whole tournament in the face and do really well because i love watching that and i love rooting for them i want them to be successful and so it's really fun for me Mm -hmm. to to try and and support them and and be happy for them like like I may do bad, but like, look how well they did. It's so cool. And they're like, awesome. Oh, I didn't do that. I'm like, no, you did. Like you did like this really cool thing. I can't even believe you did that. That's so cool. And they're like, what are you even talking about? Like, like, no, you did. <laughs> you had like this huge fish, <laughs> you know? That's and awesome. I think sometimes that people get lost in, in that, like you, you forget how fun it is. Yeah. You forget how fun it is to catch the fish and how amazing it is that you just went to some place. You had to take on all these hard challenges. The weather didn't, ha- you know, stuff happened with your boat or the weather was crazy or things didn't go the way you planned. It's never like plan A, B, or C ever happens. We were like a friend of mine, Guillermo, is like, it's always plan F. And I'm like, it is plan F. <laughs> like y- you have to basically go out and do plan F on the fly and pwn it in the face and do awesome. And I love seeing people overcome that. And I just, I don't know. I just awesome. think that's like the coolest thing. I love your enthusiasm. And, <laughs> I get, and, can you tell how excited yes, I get? Like, I can. And I think it's your videos, a little weird. I but mean, no, it's awesome. I love it. And I think that's what I love, people are drawn to too. But I love watching my friends who I know are really good anglers, I love watching them succeed. I just love watching that. I just think it's the coolest thing. <laughs> and I learn from, you know, watching what right. they do, you know, and I can go like, wow, hopefully, so. like I stayed at this house with all these great anglers. I felt like, like the little leaguer at an all-star, um, like sleepover. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, I'm not even in the same galaxy as any of these people. But it's like 
But it was so cool because they were so nice. It's like such great camaraderie. Yes. I love it. Yes. It's awesome. Exactly. So I was that. watching that podcast you were on, the the most recent one, um, the Paddle and Finn. With Susie yeah, Roloff. Yeah, yeah. Susie is so nice. And I love, like, I love her. you know, Christine was there. Oh, and, yeah. Like, they're like oh, trying to order, hang, pizza, order pizza. And I'm just like, and just having a good time. It was so nice. Christine lost her keys and then she's flying a drone. <laughs> and like, <laughs> no, like, I don't know what's going on. It is. It's sort of that, that part of it is really fun. But, um, and I enjoy that camaraderie. But yeah. I also, it's very interesting for me to just watch the process. Like w- when I first had stayed, uh, with, some of these anglers I got a little overwhelmed because they're like getting up at like three in the morning. Mm-hmm. They're going to six different boat ramps in the day. They're coming in at 10 o'clock at night, you know, crashing and doing the same thing like three or four days in a row. And then you have two days of tournaments and that, that amount of effort, like you don't realize how much effort people put into Ending up being one of the people that wins that. Like, it is not, I just looked at some maps and went out and caught fish. I mean, there is so much blood, sweat, and wow. tears, and preparation, and hard work that goes into that. And yeah. that was really, like, I was like, man, I'm, I'm, like, going to turn 50. I need to, like, take a nap. <laughs> like, I'm not getting enough sleep. You know, people are snoring, whatever, you know. And you just got to... It's a lot of stuff to overcome, mm-hmm. but it's amazing the amount of work that goes into it. And I mm-hmm. just have like the most respect for them. And it was a good eye opening of, for me of like, okay, I think I'm cranking it to 11. I got to like crank it to like 12. <laughs> and I, yeah. I don't know if I can actually physically do that. But for me, maybe what I need to do is figure out a way that I can do it for me. Right. I can't compete and do what somebody who's 30 or something or 20 something can do. I just, I'm older. You know, I'm going to figure out what I can do for me to be the best I can be. Yeah. But Love it's that. incredible the amount of work that that goes into That's that. Crazy. Yeah, I had no idea. And then on top of that, some of them are doing, producing YouTube videos and I doing know. all these social media posts. And you're juggling all that stuff, too. It's and a lot. you're working. I and know. <laughs> what the crazy. heck? What the heck, Kate? <laughs> when do I sleep? I know. <laughs> wow. It's awesome, though. I have fun, though. The YouTube Good. stuff, like, honestly, like, I do it for me, but I really hope that it helps. I really want it to help other ladies like me is. that want to do that. And I see, like, you, you can't, is. that if you, if you dream it and work hard it, like, you could do it. You can do it. It's just, it takes a lot of work to get there. It's not something you can just snap your fingers on. Right. Well, I'm going to, you've got to get back on the road and head to, you're trying to get to Memphis tonight, I think. Somewhere close to that. And then Texas tomorrow. (laughs) What part of Texas? Fort Worth. And that's kind of Dallas area. Yeah. Um, I have never been there. I've driven to Houston. (laughs) So I've driven to Houston from here in a day. Um, yeah, but not that area. So I don't it's know. gonna be great, and I'm gonna hang out with some friends. And I'm staring with my friend Cher. We're gonna go. A bunch of us are gonna go fish. Nice. And uh, then I'm driving to pen- back up to Pennsylvania in the first part of August for the uh, Susquehanna River, the Hobie BOS. Cool. There's a tournament there, and then a week later is a tournament on the Delta in California, and I'm gonna Holy drive. Cow. I'm gonna drive to it. <laughs> And nice. I'll be in California for a little while. And after that, I don't know. It's a lot of podcasts to listen to there. There is. You There's can... a lot of drive time there, but <laughs> with listen to the woman angler and adventure. I will. <laughs> I will. Thank you so much, Angie. Thank you. And we got to get your, uh, two, one of your days in here before you leave. I know. So. I need, I need to catch something. So, well, at we'll least need to a... get my line in the water and try. Yep. yep. We'll give that a shot quick. I appreciate but, that. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for being on the show. I'm going to share your YouTube channel and your Instagram in the show notes for this episode, which is going to be at thewomanangler.com slash 142, if I remember correctly. <laughs> I think we just put out 141 wow. this last week. So Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, it's been a blast. And thank you, everyone, for listening to the Woman Angler and Adventure podcast. And I hope thank you, everybody. Hope you tune in next week. 
See ya. Yeah. Bye bye.